Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing an in-depth overview of the Hesiod 2 reading comprehension section. First of all, what is the reading comprehension section structured like? So on the reading comprehension section, there are going to be 50 questions. Now there is not a time limit specified unless your school sets a specific time limit, but there is an overall time limit for your entire Hesiod 2 test. So for all of the sections that you need to take. So it's really important to keep in mind your total time limit and to make sure that you don't take up too much time with your reading comprehension section questions. Now in terms of general topics and kind of what this is going to look like, you're going to be given several different passages on the Hesiod 2 reading section. The types of passages are going to vary and some of them are going to be in different formats. So for example, you might get like an essay format or a newspaper article format. So there's going to be a variety of different ways that they present this to you. And then after you read a passage, you're going to be given several questions that are based off of that passage that you just read. Now, here's a few tips that I have in terms of how to prepare for the HESI A2 exam. I'm gonna give you some broad tips for how to study and some tips I have for that. And then I'm going to give you a few detailed specifics and topics that you should really study up on and understand as you're getting ready for the reading comprehension section. But first off, especially for the reading section, it's really helpful to take a lot of practice tests as you get ready for this section. Now, the reason for this is that taking a practice test gives you a lot of passages to read from and that's what's going to help you most is just reading and practicing asking these reading comprehension questions for the different passages that you're reading now you could also do this on your own by just reading articles and then asking yourself reading comprehension questions and kind of digging into the different passages that you're reading but practice tests just make it a lot easier because they've already done all that work for you they've found the articles to read and the essays to read and the passages to read and then all you have to do is read them and then they also give you the questions. So in terms of recommendations that I have for online resources and courses that are super helpful as you're studying, I highly recommend Mometrics's online course for the HESI A2 exam and I also would recommend Nurse Hub's online course. Both have very excellent resources and they have you know, well-researched what the test entails, and then they have great questions that they're constantly, they're constantly revising and adding to, and especially as the test changes, you know, over the months and over the years, they keep on adding more content and more questions to keep it always updated. They're slightly different from each other, so it's, if you're interested in those, I'll put the links below and you can kind of look at them and compare and see what are the differences and what might be a good fit for you. All right, so besides taking a lot of practice tests and doing a lot of reading and asking yourself critical thinking questions about those passages, those are all super helpful as you prepare for the exam. But the second thing, this is really for exam day. You want to use your time wisely. So when you're getting ready to start the exam, look at how much time you have left for the entire exam and factor in how much time you need for the other sections that are still left on the exam and then figure out, okay, how much time do I have to take the reading comprehension section? Then break that down for the 50 questions and see how much time on average you have for each question. So just do that real quickly at, at the very beginning and that way, if one question is really throwing you for a loop and you're not sure what to do, it's better to just skip that question and then go on and then come back to that question later rather than taking up a lot of time on, a, on one very difficult question and then maybe missing other questions that would be very easy for you that you could you know, get correctly very easily. So that's a good strategy and it's good to practice that in advance on your practice test so that you already know kind of how to do that before you get to test day and you have a little bit more stress you know, going into that. So it's good to practice that in advance. All right, now here are a few detailed topics that it's good to brush up on and to understand as you're going into the reading comprehension section. First of all, you wanna understand what is the topic? The topic is the entirety of what a paragraph or a sentence is about. And often this can be described in just one or two words. So for example, a passage that is about cats, you could say the topic is cats. 
remember that this is not going to be one full sentence or anything like that that is the main idea of the entire um, passage, but this is just one word or a simple phrase that describes what the passage is all about. So that's what the topic is. Now a similar thing, a similar um, term, but it's slightly different, is the main idea. So what is the main idea? Now the main idea is the most general idea that a writer is trying to convey in a passage. And basically the main idea is a rundown of the whole story. So you can ask yourself, what is it that the writer is wanting you to take away from the passage? What is the whole text about? So usually this is going to be a simple sentence. So in this case, the main idea will be a sentence. So for example, cats are fun. Let's say that that was the, the main idea of the passage. So the topic is cats, but then the main idea that the writer is trying to convey in the passage is that cats are fun. So again, remember that topics are usually just a word that encapsulates what the writer is talking about, and then the main idea is going to be a sentence that is like, this is the general idea that a writer is trying to get across. All right, so next, thesis. So what is a thesis statement? A thesis statement is the sentence that states the main idea of an essay. Also, all of the rest of the passage should be centered around that one main goal of the essay, that one main sentence or thesis. So a lot of times a thesis is going to be expressing a specific opinion or a judgment that the writer is trying to convey as they write this passage. So the next thing to understand is supporting details. Supporting details are the examples or stories or reasons or steps or facts that are given in a passage to explain the main idea. So there could be major details or minor details. Major details are ones that are helping to really explain and describe the main idea. And then minor details would be expressing and making the major details more clear, if that makes sense. All right, so those things are very important to understand. Topic, main idea, thesis statement, and then supporting details. Now some other things you want to make sure that you kind of practice and work on is being able to determine the meaning of words based on the context that they're in. I got many, many questions like this on the HESI A2 where there was a specific word taken out that could sometimes mean different things in different contexts. And then they asked the question, what does this word mean in this context? And then they gave A, B, C, D, E. You know, it means this, A, or it means this, B. And I had to select which was the best description of that word in that specific context. You'll also want to be able to identify and analyze the author's purpose and tone. So purpose is why did the author write this? And then tone is what is the tone that this is being expressed in. Another thing you're going to want to be able to identify is whether the writing is fact or opinion. So as you probably already know this, but fact would be something that could be identified as true or false. So it's something that is completely objective. Or if it's opinion, it would be something that is subjective and that just means that it's something that the author thinks and it cannot be proved as true or false necessarily. So opinions would be if you're expressing like a belief or a feeling, um, a, a judgment that you're making about something, all of that would be opinion versus fact. And then some questions are going to require you to make some inferences to kind of work out from the passage, what does the author mean when he says this or when she says this, or drawing a conclusion like, what is the logical conclusion of this passage based on what the author has told me or given me. All right, and a few more specifics about kind of the structure and the style of the writing that you'll want to brush up on and understand and then practice identifying this in passages that you read are the author's point of view. So the point of view is just the way that an author looks at a topic or an idea that they're describing. So you want to be able to look at what they're saying and be able to identify whether the author is coming with a specific bias, whether the author is making certain assumptions or certain opinions that the author is already coming in with. So you'll want to be able to identify that, the point of view of the author. You'll also want to understand what hyperbole is. Hyperbole is when there's an exaggeration. So if you say, for example, I've watched this movie a thousand times. Now you probably haven't watched the movie a thousand times, and if you have, it's probably a little bit excessive, but most people don't really mean that if they say, I've watched the movie a thousand times. And most people know 
that that is a hyperbole. It's a way of exaggerating to make a point. So you will want to identify that in writing to see you know, if that's happening, hyperbole. Another thing to know how to identify is onomatopoeia. I love that word, it's so fun to say. So what is onomatopoeia? It is when a word sounds like what it is describing. So for example, buzz, which is like a bee. So it sounds like the buzzing of a bee. Or sizzle, so you hear like that, almost like that sizzling sound when you say the word sizzle. So you're hearing what the word is describing when you say the word. That is onomatopoeia. All right, um, you'll want to understand the tone of a passage. And this is like being able to identify what the writer is feeling or as they're writing, the attitude that they have. The tone is not necessarily the author's opinion. It's a way that they have written the essay or the passage in. Another thing you'll want to understand is rhetoric and rhetorical devices. So what is rhetoric? Rhetoric is the language that is used, whether it's to motivate or to inspire or to argue or to persuade. So those are all examples of rhetoric. You want to work on identifying what is the rhetoric of a passage and then also rhetorical devices are a technique or a way of wording things that a writer uses to win the audience to their side. So you'll want to be able to identify if that's happening in a passage. If the writer is using certain devices to win you over to his or her argument. And two last things that are very important. This has to do with the style of writing and then the structure of the writing. So style of writing, you want to learn how to identify between these four different types of writing. Expository, narrative, persuasive, and descriptive. So expository writing is a, a writing style that explains or exposes a topic. Narrative writing is writing that is telling a story. Persuasive writing is a writing style where the author is trying to convince the reader of something. And then descriptive writing is writing a writing style that creates an image in a reader's mind. So know those four different styles of writing. And then finally, let's talk about quickly about the structure of a text. So these are just a few things to be aware of and to be looking for as you read a passage. So there could be comparison and contrast. There could be a problem with a solution. There could be a sequence of events that's happening in order. There could be a description or descriptive structure to the text. And then there are many other examples of the way that a text could be structured. But those are a few that you may see on the HESI A2 exam. So that is a more in-depth overview of what you may see on the reading comprehension section of the HESI A2 exam. If you're currently studying for the HESI A2 exam, go ahead and drop a comment down below and let me know when you're taking the test and what are some of the study areas that you are really focusing on right now. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and smash that like button down below and you can subscribe to my channel for much more content related to passing your nursing entrance exams and doing really well on your nursing prerequisites.